Let's look at the types of systems in use today. The most basic type of septic system permitted today for long-term use is the conventional gravity system. The gravity system consists of three parts, the septic tank, the drain field, and the soil beneath the drain field. In Washington State, the conventional gravity system requires a minimum of three feet of native, undisturbed soil beneath the drain field. As wastewater flows from the house into the septic tank through the inlet baffle, heavy solids settle to the sludge layer on the bottom of the tank. Lighter materials float to the top, forming the scum layer. The clear liquid in the middle is known as effluent. The effluent flows through the outlet baffle into the next component of the system. If your system does not already have one, consider installing an outlet baffle filter. These filters fit into the outlet baffle of your septic tank and add an extra barrier that prevents solids from moving into the drain field or other components. If you have a concrete baffle, you may want to hire someone to retrofit a plastic baffle in its place. Concrete baffles tend to degrade in septic tanks due to corrosive gases. And remember to clean your filter every 6 to 12 months. Typically, gravity systems will utilize a distribution box, or D-box, to equally distribute the effluent into each lateral pipe in the drain field. Equal distribution of the wastewater into each lateral is critical to the long-term operation of the drain field. Once the effluent reaches the laterals, it flows out of small holes and into the surrounding soil, where aerobic or oxygen-loving bacteria and other microbes treat the wastewater by removing pathogens. This treatment is critical in protecting groundwater and surface water resources. Here we can see a cross-section of the drain field. The perforated drain pipe sits on a level grade with gravel. The gravel provides a space for the effluent to move. Above the gravel is a fabric layer to keep the upper level of fine soil from moving down into the gravel. Here's an example of gravelous chambers used in place of rock and filter fabric. Pressurized systems may be used where sufficient soil is present, but the wastewater needs to be pumped to a certain area of the property. Pressure systems are also used when the soil type requires a specific dosing or when vertical separation is two to three feet. In Washington State, pressurized systems need at least two feet of vertical separation, 12 inches less than conventional because of how a pressurized system distributes the wastewater. Pressurized systems start with a septic tank, just like a gravity system. After the septic tank, the wastewater flows into a pump tank, and it's pumped to the drain field, where it's spread equally throughout the drain field lines. The pump tank accepts wastewater from the septic tank through an inlet baffle. The pump itself is located on the floor of the tank. There are two floats used to control the pump, the on and off float and the redundant off float. If the wastewater level were to drop below the pump, the pump could overheat and burn up. The redundant off-float prevents the pump from turning on if there's not adequate wastewater to cover the pump. The on-off-float turns the pump on as the wastewater level rises. The effluent is dosed every few hours and is spread out across the whole bottom of the trench. Some pumps operate on demand, while others use a timer to start a pump cycle. As the pump moves wastewater into the drain field, the level drops, dropping the float and turning off the pump, providing the soil with time to dry out between doses. The third and highest float is the alarm float. If the pump fails or too much wastewater enters the pump tank, the wastewater level rises and lifts the alarm float. This sounds an alarm on the control panel near the house. Push to silence it and then call a licensed professional. The alarm is there to let you know there's a problem, so don't ignore it. Not all pump tanks utilize a float system. Some newer systems now use a transducer rather than on-off floats. Most pump tanks have some built-in capacity to handle wastewater during power outages. The pump tank has many electrical components that should be serviced by a professional. Working with electricity around wastewater can be very dangerous. Now let's talk about alternative systems. First, the mound system. Mounds can be used where there is only one or two feet of suitable native soil because additional vertical separation is built up in a mound of specially engineered sand. The wastewater is applied at the top of the mound and percolates down through the sand to the native soil below. Another type of alternative system is the sand filter system. A sand filter is basically a box of engineered sand and gravel which treats the wastewater. A sand filter requires only one and a half to two and a half feet of suitable native soil. The wastewater is applied at the top of the sand filter and flows down through the sand and gravel receiving treatment. Then the pre-treated wastewater flows either by pressure or gravity to a drain field for final treatment and dispersal.
There are several proprietary systems for properties that do not have sufficient native soil depth. One type is an aerobic treatment unit, or ATU. Aerobic systems need a minimum of 12 to 18 inches of soil. A blower or aerator injects air into a tank, enhancing the aerobic microbial action. This type of system will often require some form of disinfection, such as chlorine or UV treatment, before the wastewater enters the drain field. ATUs are proprietary devices and are required by the manufacturer to be inspected at least once and sometimes twice a year by a manufacturer's certified representative. Another type of proprietary system is the biofilter. Biofilters are designed and installed on properties where there is as little as one foot of suitable soil available. The manufacturer requires biofilter approved professionals to design, install and perform maintenance on these systems. Contact your local health department for more details. So, in general, as the vertical separation decreases, the complexity of the system increases. So do the cost and maintenance requirements. Alternative systems cost thousands of dollars more than your basic system. Protect the system you have because replacement septic systems can be very expensive. Throughout the years, many different containers have been used as septic tanks. Many are single compartment. Many are no longer safe or effective. Metal tanks, for instance, suffer from corrosion and the lids have been known to collapse. If you have an older system installed prior to the 1970s, be careful of what might be in the ground.